January 1889. If my sister Alma had lived, I should never have begun the seances. She died of scarlatina soon after her second birthday, when I was five years old. I remember only fragments from the time before she died. I remember coming home after one of those walks and being allowed to nurse Alma by the drawing room fire, feeling the heat of the flames on my cheek as I held her. I remember too, though perhaps I was only told of it, lying in a cot and shivering, looking up at a window which seemed very small and far away, and hearing the sound of weeping, muffled as if through a thick cotton wool. I do not know how long my own illness lasted, but it seems, in memory, as if I woke to find the house shrouded in darkness and my mother changed beyond recognition. She kept to her room for many months, during which I was allowed only brief visits. The blinds were always drawn. Often she seemed scarcely aware of my presence. And when at last she began to sit up and then to emerge from her room, stooped like an old woman, her hair thin and lank, she remained sunk in lightless misery. Sometimes she would send for me and then seemed to not know why I had appeared, as if the wrong person had answered her summons. Whatever I ventured to say to her would be met with the same lifeless indifference, and if I sat in silence, I would feel the weight of her grief pressing upon me until I feared I would suffocate. At home, however, my dead sister was always with us. Mama had made a shrine of Alma's room, a small chamber opening off her own bedroom, keeping everything as if Alma might reappear at any moment. The idea came to me with the echo of my own question to Mrs. Graves. Instead of trying to persuade Mama to join the society, I would summon Alma's spirit myself. Hello everyone, Adrian here. So today we are going to be doing a book review. However, before we get into that, I have a couple of announcements. First of all, I am very happy to announce that I finally have a job in phlebotomy and I start at the end of this month. I am super excited about it. And thank you all for your support and your encouragement as far as my job hunting is concerned. So I got my license and certification back in early 2020, but ever since that time, I have been looking for entry-level jobs in phlebotomy. And just recently, I lucked out and was able to get a job here on the island in phlebotomy. I am super excited about it. Again, thank you all for your encouragement and your well wishes. They have been much, much appreciated. And before we continue here, I would also like to mention, since I'm talking about a book called Seance, You'll see in a minute. <laughs> but I just wanted to mention Seance Perfumes, and they are an independently owned uh, company in California, and they make amazing handmade perfumes, lotion oils, room sprays, candles, just wonderful, wonderful stuff. Lately, I have been addicted to their fragrances Cemetery and La Femme Fantôme, and combining those two together, oh, it's my signature scent. I can't get away from it. <laughs> And since I mentioned their uh, lotion oils, they have recently come out with a lotion oil that corresponds with their La Femme Fantôme um, scent, which I am absolutely in love with. Basically, it's their version of Chanel Number no. 5, but I personally think it's better and it's more unique. I love these oils. They are wonderful for keeping moist in the wintertime. And no, this is not sponsored. I do not have an affiliate link. I am just giving them a shout out just because I love them. And if you guys want to check out Seance Perfumes for yourselves, go ahead and look in the link below and you will find their social media as well as their website. So please go check them out. So every now and then I'll come across a gothic novel written in recent times and I'll go ahead and check it out. This was definitely the case with The Seance by John Harwood. Pretty exciting. This, the title alone is just intriguing. These modern gothic novels will come up in my recommended reading on my Amazon account from time to time, which is pretty cool. I'm always looking for new gothic novels to read, review, and share with you guys, whether it's written in the 19th century or the 21st. 
you never know what you can find and it can be a treasure trove. I personally don't find anything wrong with reading a gothic novel inspired by the Victorian era instead of just restricting myself to the 19th century, though I'll always be digging for more hidden gothic stories of the 19th century that have been neglected or forgotten. I adore stories about the occult in the Victorian era and learning about the very birth of those practices, so the plot of the séance certainly intrigued me. Set in late Victorian England, the séance tells the story of Constance Langton, an alienated young woman who feels rejected by her crestfallen mother's long, dark obsession with her deceased baby sister. It's to such an extent that Constance suspects that she isn't really her mother's daughter. Discovering her own seeming affinity for psychical abilities and clairvoyance, Constance hopes to bring closure to her mother by bringing her to a séance led by spiritualists to speak with the spirit of her long-dead baby sister one last time. Her mother is so affected by this experience that her desperation worsens and impels her mother to suicide. Shortly thereafter, Constance receives word that she has inherited an allegedly haunted mansion. This piques her morbid curiosity, and she is faced with the dubious duty of sorting out her attachment to Raxford Hall. She unveils a dastardly plot laden with treachery, coercion, disappearances, specters, and bloodshed. And maybe a little bit of romance in there too. Forbidden or not. This novel was a pleasant surprise. The language and vernacular is definitely in line with Victorian writing styles, yet it does contain that edge of bluntness of modern writing as well. It's the best of both worlds. As for the elements of the story as well as the plot, there is a great deal of suspense and intrigue built up throughout the story. It was a serious page turner, it was thrilling, and I just couldn't put it down. Going through the journal entries of the previous inhabitants of Raxford Hall helps you to put together the pieces of the puzzle, um, just as Constance does. It brings to mind stories like Dracula by Bram Stoker and Diary of a Madman by Guy de Maupassant and the gloomy elegance of Wilkie Collins's spooky stories. If you're looking for a Victorian Gothic thriller without the intimidatingly impervious vernacular some classic literature may have, this is definitely the story for you. So thank you so much to everyone for watching. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I know it's been a bit of a while, but with <laughs> transitioning into my new job and everything, things have been pretty chaotic, <laughs> needless to say. And thank you so much to my patrons, including my latest patron, whose name is Mecca Creel, or Creel? Terribly sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name, but thank you so much for becoming a patron. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. And subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and make sure you hit that bell for notifications. If you are down for gothic literature reviews, reviews of new goth bands, and some old goth bands that are still making new music, things like that absinthe reviews, and even talking about the 19th century, such as opera and culture, and other fascinating subject matter. You guys are amazing, I love you, and I will see you guys later. Bye!